All right, we're live and back with track one of day two in Python Web Conference. I am joined with Philip Bauer. We're going to talk today about Plone. I'm excited about talking more about Plone. We got a whole dedicated morning of this. So I will let Philip take it away. Hey, good morning. I'll just share my, um, oh, I'll have to sh start the sharing probably. Uh, so you can actually see my second desktop. I'll use the uh, the small screen uh, from my laptop so you guys with a laptop uh, can see enough. Uh, otherwise, my other screen is actually huge. So that'd be uh, hard for you. So um, I'm going to talk about Plone 6 and uh, your uh, first Plone 6 project. And uh, I'm going to kick off with uh, some information about what Plone is, what Plone 6 is, Volto, if you ever heard of that. I'm going to create a content type, create a view for that. I'll talk about a couple of features we would use for this first project. Uh, we'll add sponsors because it's a conference website. Uh, we add listings, uh, move stuff to events, and show them in the calendar. And I'll have a sm small summary. So maybe there is a bit, bit uh, for every one of you. So uh, let's kick it off with the question of what actually, what Plone is, uh, 6 actually is. Plone 6 is, well, Plone is the ultimate enterprise CMS. That's actually, that's what it says on the website. It is open source, has ever always been open source. It has a shit ton of features. Um, really uh, a big part of being a good Plone developer is actually knowing the features that exist. So you don't have to develop them yourselves. It has, it is 20 years of innovation and 20 years of stability. And you might think, oh, that doesn't really fit because how can you be innovative and stable at the same time? But we're trying to re not reinvent, but uh, move what uh, CMS can be forward with every release. And at the same time, I think we're the only, Plone is the only system where you can still migrate from Plone one or two to three, four, five, all the way down uh, because we never uh, broke a migration path. Even we have even a built-in migration from Python two to Python three and stuff like that. It is super secure, has never had any zero day. It runs on Python three, uh, six, seven, and eight. Uh, it uses the ZODB. So if you ever had sex, great, but if, if you ever s uh, saved, a Python object natively in a database uh, without a uh, abstraction layer. I like uh, SQL Alchemy as the next guy, but uh, the ZODB is just great because it stores uh, Python objects as pickles in a database. It's really great for development because you never have to think about your database unless you back it up and stuff. Uh, for the backend people, it has traversal, object publishing, schema-driven content, a component architecture that is excellent, or my, but now I'm talking about something completely different because Plone 6, uh, also same as Plone 5, has a REST API. And on top of this REST API lives a brand new front end. So, oh my God, you may think, uh, why do we need a brand new front end uh, for Plone? Because we, there is a front end and we, it's brand new and it uses REST API, it uses React, it uses semantic UI to show, uh, to render, uh, it uses semantic UI components to, uh, to com uh, compose the user interface. It uses component shadowing to uh, be able to override uh, certain things. It uses Razzle for server-side rendering, uh, Redux for routing, and it has its own editor, the Pastanaga editor. And you may think that's kind of weird, uh, but it has its benefits. So I'm going to show a quick demo of what uh, this user in, new user interface is. This is a website I whipped up yesterday with Volto. And you see it runs on, uh, look on port 3000. Okay, I hope you can see my screen. Uh, I think that it should work. Uh, so it runs on port 3000. So yeah, I have two processes running. One is the back end, one is the front end. And the front end obviously is the React application, the front at uh, the back end being the Plone, uh, the Python application. So here's my uh, new user interface and you can, uh, I'll show you a couple of things that it does. You can uh, just click around and you get instantly get your content 
from the website without a request. So it does the uh, a REST request and not a full request. That's obviously uh, the main difference. You can create content like a new news item. I'll just add a new news item. In this case, have a new news item full and get it's, it's got a nice uh, rich text editor here. Uh, you can create headings and whatnot and uh, can save that and it renders nicely. And so this is a news item and you see it has structured data. So it's based on a schema. But on top of that, there is also a, um, a content type that has the, uh, the uh, Pastanaga editor uh, enabled. Uh, so that looks a bit different when you edit that because you get these little blocks that you can add and edit. Here is another. And one more, and you can have multiple, you can move these blocks around uh, in a uh, vertical, uh, vertically, you can have, you have different blocks, for example, for images, you can just pick one of the existing images here and say, okay, this image should be rendered on the right side, I'll move it here up, and I have another, uh, another block with a listing, in this case, I'll, just show all the news items that exist in the site. And uh, I'll make the image uh, a bit wider, make it look nicer. So and I, have, I can compose my page like this. So that's the, uh, the Pasta Naga editor. And the front page is actually created exactly like, like this. So there's some text, there's an image, and here's a listing that I created by hand. So this is just a quick uh, overview of the editor uh, of Volto. Uh, now let's create a project. So the project's gonna be a conference website like this conference here that you're attending. It has a couple of talks that, um, because unless the website lists the talks it shows, uh, you're not gonna attend. Um, it has sponsors and has listings of talks. The, the official list of the conference website, the part of this is, is taken from the Mastering Clone Training, is actually much longer. It has a huge list of features, but I'm going to focus on only these couple of uh, features. So the first thing we need to model talks is a content type. So, um, and I'm not going to do any programming, at least not any Python programming in this, uh, in this talk. So I'll go to the back end. Since I'm logged in as an administrator, I can go to the uh, control panel. I'll go back so you see how that happens. Here's my user site setup. I go to dexterity content types and I create a new one. Uh, I'm going to talk, call that talk two because I already created talk and I'll um, switch on the blocks behavior so I get the blocks editor and I save that. And starting from this moment, and this is, has uh, been true for a lot of years now, Plone, uh, in Plone you can add this content type. You don't have to restart your application, your back, neither your back end nor your front end, and you have a talk. Um, if I would type correctly, it would be a talk, and you have uh, the option to add some, some content here. But uh, we want some more because we want to have a speaker and uh, some, some more structured information. And here I have to switch to the back end still because the schema editor uh, that uh, I would use in this case, um, here I want to use a schema uh, for my, to model my content type. So there is a way to just do that by hand as I uh, write manually in a list, but I could uh, create a content type in a through the web schema, and that is not does not exist yet in Volto. It only exists in the back end. It's still work in progress. So um, I'll just uh, switch to the back end. It's also uh, it's um, accessible uh, under API. I'll need to log in as my user. Oops. And I go to the back end and you see it's kind of similar, the whole user uh, content, uh, the, the whole uh, setup here. I have my talk to and I can add a couple of fields 
for example, uh, very important is the speaker. That's a text line and a audience. That would be, uh, oops, audience. That would be a multiple choice uh, here. And I can even add the options here, um, beginner, uh, advanced, blah, and uh, professional. You get the idea. I, pre I created this uh, content type beforehand and I'll show you the schema quickly. Here is the talk and here are all the fields in the talk. Uh, content types, so I have type of talk because we're going to handle keynotes and talks the same. A room, so the tracks in this conference, details, an image for the speaker, the GitHub link and whatnot. So a lot of uh, features are here. Uh, there's also a behavior that I'm going to switch off because I shouldn't have switched that on yet. I did that for testing. So I have a, now I have a talk content type available after uh, I didn't even didn't didn't even have to restart and I'm going to create one talk you see talk two is still there and now my schema is here I can maximize this and I say okay new talk I oops I don't know something uh, the type is a talk and the audience as a multiple choice is going to be multiple people the track is two, some details, I can add rich text. Um, I don't know, uh, it's the German name for uh, John Doe, basically. Uh, getting my email address, you can upload an image if you want, biography and stuff like that and save that. And uh, this uh, content, this talk here that I just created is now showing up. So I modeled my data, and um, I'm finished with that. And I'm, um, I'll quickly show you how this would look in Python if I do it for a professional setup. I would go into my editor. Here is my editor. There's my backend that's clone. I would create a Python egg, obviously, and model my content type like in Django uh, with a, uh, in Python here. It very much looks like a Django model, but in we call it schema in uh, Plone and Zoop. So here you see all these fields. This is what would happen if you would write that in Python. Uh, it has plenty of features, this uh, schema definition um, approach, and it's very powerful. So let's uh, move forward. And it creates the add and edit forms for that, but you already saw that. So now here is my content type, my schema editor. This is the Python schema. So now, as you saw, when I rendered the, uh, the, the talk, it looked terrible because it didn't show uh, up, it didn't show any of the information that I needed uh, to see. So I'll um, now, uh, we'll do some actual development in the front end. Um, by the way, you can always ask questions. I hope that um, Kelvin will field them to me if there's something that I skipped or missed. Uh, but after the talk, we'll have uh, 15 minutes uh, so you can, um, where you can ask questions. Okay, now let's create a view for the, uh, for the talk. Um, hang on. First, before we create a view, we have to have the front end available, uh, basically. I did that before. It creates a running Volto app that is uh, there for you to customize, which is great. So you have a full, you can run that with yarn build, you do a production red, ready setup, you just do npm install, create Volto apps like create React app. You uh, probably know that it's called front end in my case and you start it up. And then I'm gonna create uh, one file in components called talk.js and it's gonna hold some boilerplate and I'm gonna register that. I'm gonna show you that quickly before we move on. So here is my front end. And uh, in this, this is created by Yarn Volt, uh, Create Volto, um, uh, by Create Volto Project, sorry. Um, and in SRC, there's your custom code. It's basically empty. It's a lot of empty, uh, um, 
uh, directories where you can add your own actions, your own route, your own reducers, your own views, your, your own stuff, whatever. And what I add is a folder called views and it has one file for now, ignore all the others, called talk.jsx because we that's React at the moment. So here's my boilerplate for the React view for talks. And at the moment, it's not used at all. I have to register it first in config.js. Uh, you don't have to memorize any of that. It's all well documented and you can do copy and paste. And many times I don't know how things actually work because I'm more of a backend developer, but the documentation and the trainings are so good that it's really nice to copy and paste the pieces together to get the effect that you want. In this case, the effect that I want is to have an additional view. Uh, this would be added later in the training. So here I extend the uh, views uh, and in, there, uh, in, the, in the object views, I extend uh, content type views with my custom content type talk view and I'm going to assign that to talk. So whenever there is a content type called talk, the talk view is going to be used by Volto. Talk view is imported here from components views talk. It's where I added this file. Um, good. So let's go back to talk.jsx and I don't even have to restart my front end. It just, uh, if I change something here, uh, that's uh, one of the great things is uh, hello Python world. If I, uh, it would reload automatically. Uh, that's a nice thing about the uh, JavaScript ecosystem. So here's my, uh, my, my dummy component and I created two iterations of that that go a little further. Um, so this is number, oh, hang on, this would be uh, number two. So here I now take um, Volto passes the current object that you're looking at from a route. We're not using routes. It is traversal, but you look at in the browser and you see here's schedule a new talk uh, and it, that's passed as props to the talk view and you assign uh, the, that to uh, the variable content and you can use content. That's now the Python uh, object uh, that uh, represents your content type and the data you stored in your database and I'm going to render the title and after I save it automatically says a new talk and the same is true for the other uh, content types in my list hang on my rendering yeah so here for example this is my uh, talk today so my the title is rendered and now I'm gonna skip ahead a little a little is uh, the under, uh, under statement of the day to the final uh, talk view. And I'm gonna uh, just render it and show you a couple of features from that. Bam, here it is. So this is how the final talk view looks. And it's nothing more than just uh, expansions on what I did before, because I have as props my content type uh, and I just wrap that in a couple of uh, semantic UI, uh, UI elements to make them look nice. Render that as a H1, as a uh, paragraph. I'm going to do an iteration over the audience because the audience is a list. I'm going to get take the title, give a color mapping to the audience because I have different audience types, beginners, advanced and professionals, they all get a different color. And I use the uh, semantic UI um, uh, component label to render uh, this, uh, these nice buttons, for example. And same with other things like um, here, what, there's an email link and an icon for the uh, for the mail. That's the only thing that is uh, no the that actually works. The other one uh, at the moment doesn't work because I don't have the production build. Usually you get a nice GitHub icon and not an error here. And so their images are not e IMG SRC, but these are um, again semantic UI components. Uh, that you can use. And I'm going to render all this information that I stored in the content type. So it is the only thing that you have to do is check out the semantic UI documentation. 
pick the component that you want to use to render that or copy stuff from other pieces of Volto so you can uh, reuse that uh, and make, to make it look nice. That's the main, that was the main goal here. So this is my final view for this. Now we have our talks, um, but we need more. We need a, uh, a list of talks and there is a couple of solutions for that. Um, this is the final list that I would actually want, but I could also, I could just write a manual list. It's a small conference. It's not a hundred talks, uh, but so I could just write it by hand. I could create a listing block like I showed you in the beginning here on the front page. There's a listing block. Hang on. Why doesn't it come? Go here. So when I edit my front page, I have this block here and it shows all types. So I can expand on that and sort them by uh, something, uh, whatever uh, interest, interests me, I can add additional criteria. So that's an option to create your listing talk. But what I want is, in this case, is my custom view. So I have, again, to register a view and I have to, then I can use the search endpoint uh, from the REST API to render that content. Oops, that's skipping ahead. So I'm going to do that quickly. Um, so here in config.js, there's a talk list view registered under layout views. And so the, the, the only point that is uh, tricky here is that you need to have the talk list view uh, registered for the content type, but you want to use that. And you have to do that in the back end. So that's now I'm getting, that's a time machine thingy. We're going back into Zoop actually, because Plone is built on top of Zoop. And we're for folders, um, we're gonna register this view uh, to be available. I already did that. I'm just gonna show you here. Talk list view is available as an available view method for talks. And because Volto checks if that's allowed, otherwise it wouldn't show up. So I did that already. So my, uh, that already shows up. And now I can go to my uh, schedule folder and select a different view. I just registered that and the view automatically shows up, talk list view, and I get a list of my talks. So how do I get the list of the talks? Again, in my components views, I have the talk list here, JSX, uh, registered, the one that I use in config.js. I'm going to close talk.js for a, a second. And so this is the minimum, the bare minimum that you, you need to, uh, to do a, um, a catalog query using the REST uh, endpoint for search. So this is some boilerplate. Uh, don't expect me to explain to you what's actually happening there because I'm more, mostly a Python developer and I just use React. And that's kind of the main point of my talk if you wait until the end. So we're, we're doing a search for talks. We're gonna return the full objects and we have that as available as results. So we have a variable results uh, that we can iterate over here. So we have a container, it has a heading called talk list. So that's why it says uh, talk list here. And here we're iterating over the results uh, with map, that's basic JavaScript, um, with the nice arrow functions, I love them. Uh, and uh, we're creating a H2 and a link. So you might wonder why are we not using just a href? Because that would make uh, the link a uh, classic link. So every time I click on it, I'm gonna do a full request to that URL. It works fine. The result will be exactly the same, but it's much, much slower because that link, that's not a semantic UI thing. That is from Redux router DOM. That's a Redux link. So, uh, and it, after, when we use it, I just click and you see, it's not doing a full request. It's automatic, it's, instantaneous gratification, that's what I would say. Uh, so that's really, really fast. Uh, and you get, uh, you, ca you can uh, create a list here. So here, item is, uh, this. If you, if you know Python, this is for item in results. Uh, 
H2 AHREF item title. Uh, that's basically it. It's just done a little differently uh, because it's done in React. I got a couple of iterations here. So talk list one, that's the uh, first and talk list final. So I'm gonna step, uh, skip a middle step here and just gonna copy that into talk list, um, save. And you'll see, hopefully, after I um, click on schedule, my final list. And what, uh, what that does is exactly the same as we did in the talk view before. We just iterate over more of the information because now item, each item is a talk, the real full object. I'm just gonna uh, use some semantic UI elements to render, uh, to render them in a nice way. This is basically the HTML. There's nothing, uh, no hard JavaScript development going on there. This is, uh, so this is, uh, it's really easy to learn in a, in a day or two um, because that's basically HTML and uh, not much more. Uh, there's a couple uh, tricky things in some cases. Uh, for example, the, uh, when the, the, the color mapping, again, you need to, uh, when you iterate over things, that's not super obvious if you come from a uh, Python background only, but after a while you get used to that. Here is like audience map item and you're doing the, the map. So here's a for loop again inside uh, a for loop. That's totally normal. So we have a talk list. Hey. Um, now I said I'm gonna also add sponsors, but I'm worried that I'm running out of time. I'm not sure how, what time it actually is. I'll have to, uh, yeah, I'm still good. So if you want sponsors, you have again, a couple of different options. Uh, one would be to just write them by hand, create a sponsor page. Another would be to override a, co a type, uh, a component from uh, the Volto side, in this case, the footer, um, to, uh, to display the sponsors. And that is what I would do. I'm not, gonna, not going to do that, but it's documented in the training that I'm referring to constantly. And you'll just add in your uh, front end uh, package, which is empty. You could add into theme, you add override. It's using component shadowing. Um, there's in development, there's still the concept of viewlets where you actually have a slot that you can fill. Uh, that's not in the current release as far as I know. Um, but uh, it's easy to, for example, override the footer here to display a list of, um, of logos for, for the sponsors. If you want to do it professionally, then your sponsor, uh, that is not pure HTML, then your sponsor is again a content type and you have content sponsors of various types like silver, bronze, platinum, whatnot. And the uh, logos show up in different sizes according to the level and it's all done automatically because you're running a huge conference or like me, uh, you just want to show off uh, and teach that in the that stuff. So I'm going to skip the whole uh, sponsor thing. It exists in in the back end. Actually, uh, the code for the sponsors exists already. So if you want to, if you at one sometime you uh, jump into the full training, there's a Python schema for the sponsors. And one nice feature for Plone, I guess Kim mentioned that in his training yesterday, is you can have field permissions for content. So you have you have these sponsors. They say, yeah, uh, we don't really have these five thousand dollars, but we could sponsor all the food for you, for example. And so you have this secret notes field where you can say, ah, we got made it made a special deal with them or um, they get it uh, cheaper because they did something, or oh, they haven't paid their bill, that's why they're not still not on the website, stuff like that, uh, just as a side note. Okay, um, now we got a list of uh, talks at a conference, and at some point you realize you forgot something really important because a conference is happening on a certain day or multiple days, and Talks just don't happen. They happen at a certain time. So you need a uh, need to put them in a time slot. You can again do that by hand, just write that there. But in this case, 
we want to uh, show that uh, start and date format. And um, another point I want to try try to drive home is um, reuse the power that clone has and use, uh, for example, the event behavior for content types and the event component to render this information because, oh, yeah, I should, no, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna show you that. Um, if I have a, nope, why do I have that? Uh, news, I guess I'll delete it. No, in training, it's in training. Here we have events, uh, in Plone, Plone has events, it shows up. So this is the party, it has no end. It starts at eight o'clock and a different event, a training for example, has an end date. So you can imagine and now add to that time zones uh, and uh, locations and uh, events that go the full day. So the, the options to render event start and end dates are almost limitless and it's a terrible pain to write that yourself. We're not gonna do that. Instead of that, uh, instead, First, I'm gonna enable the event behavior for content for our content type. Just go to talk, behaviors, add event basic. That's how it's called. It adds a start and end date. And instantly, when I go to my schedule, and I go to a keynote, for example, and I edit that, and I see, I look at my schema. I only should full size that probably. Oops, what happened here? Uh, I have event start and event date, uh, end date. I already added the appropriate dates, so I don't have to do that now, but I can pick a day and a time. It's a nice, uh, nice picker. So I have this information now. Now I wanna display that. And as I said, again, uh, reuse what Plone gives you. In this case, the event um, component uh, the ev event view of Volto has a component that you can reuse and it's called when. Nice name. It's in event dates info. Uh, in classic clone, that's a viewlet, I guess, part of the, or a view, part of uh, the event view. And you can, the when component, you can pass the when component start, end, hold day, open day. Uh, open end, that's the information that exists in the event basic behavior schema. And once you save that and render, uh, it renders, hopefully renders the whole thing fresh. You see, um, sometimes I have to reload for some reason. Um, here is my new talk, here's my date. It just shows up. And I also moved some other information in here because it just looks nicer, at least if you have some, uh, some, some, information here. It looks really nice. So um, you reused uh, features from Plone to give you additional um, um, behaviors for your uh, custom application without doing any real hard programming. Now we're not going to reuse a feature of Plone, but we're going to reuse a feature of the React ecosystem because that's another main point I want to drive home that this is a huge ecosystem and you can use that uh, to uh, create your, uh, make your applications better. So now um, my schedule uh, looks nice, but the time and date are missing. I could just add that into the uh, talk list view. Um, that will be nice and I could sort it by time and date. But uh, well, there is a, this basic concept for displaying dates that you might have, may have heard of. It's called a calendar. Um, and uh, in JavaScript, uh, there is this excellent uh, calendar um, uh, module called full calendar. And we're gonna use that to create a calendar view. And again, we have to register the view. It's, it's in views calendar, JSX, uh, as a, a available layout. And I also already added the calendar underscore view as a option, uh, as an available view for folders because my, uh, the schedule navigation point is a folder that contains these talks, but not only, um, yeah skipping ahead. Um, so I, I have this here imported and I just make it available. And then I have my calendar view. Um, 
let's start with the a very basic uh, calendar view. So this is uh, exactly um, almost the same as the talk list view with one small uh, difference. And I'm, I, I, uh, I'm looking forward to see if you spot the difference. So I'll uh, change back to the listing view, for example, or I don't know, let's go for the tabular view, see the, the number one, two, three, four, five, six. And I, now I go to the calendar view and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what changed? Uh, the thing that changed, why uh, eight things are showing up instead of six, is I changed the query to the search endpoint because I added events. Uh, so I have this folder already. I had this folder when I started my conference preparation. I added a date, for example, for a uh, deadline for talk submission. I added an uh, event for, uh, we're definitely going to have a party on Friday. So I already added it even before we had a single talk. So, uh, but now I can't, sh can't show them in the listing. That would be weird because the schema is all different. But uh, since both are events now because e events and talks both implement the event behavior. I can both use them in the uh, event component uh, in the calendar view. So here's just a header. And again, I'm iterating over the results and showing a link. So there's nothing calendarish yet at all, but I have uh, another iteration, the final one. So the, what you need to do, I'm just quickly gonna, uh, Click on the wrong button, obviously. Here is my right, the right button. Um, so you install a uh, full calendar with yarn add. That's like pip install, uh, but it also adds the pins uh, to the uh, yarn pin. Uh, can't remember how the file is called. The, the, the file where the version pins are added. Uh, so that's uh, a, a it's a nice feature because it adds uh, the dependency to your equivalent of a setup UI and your versions, version pins at the same time. Uh, the version pins is yarn lock and package JSON is basically your setup UI where it adds the, uh, the dependency full calendar on top of Volto and the yarn lock now has the version pins for, uh, for the full calendar components that you install. And now I'm going to use these um, components. Again, copy and oops, paste. So you import the full calendar component following the very simple uh, documentation in the full, on the fullcalendar.io website. And you uh, use that to save and hopefully something happens. Yay, stuff happens. So now there's a couple of things that I want to sh uh, tell you about that because they're exciting. Um, if you've never seen, uh, so this is like the uh, months list and the day view. And the day view has this like track one, track two, track, track three. And this is a premium plugin of Full Calendar IO. And the cool thing about this premium plugin is exposed here in the schedule license key. Uh, the plugin is called the resource time grid plugin. Um, and if your pro project is GPL, like the training is, uh, you can use it as, you don't need to buy a license, you can just include that. So Plone, for example, since it's all GPL, uh, could include this premium plugin from full calendar IO. It's, a, it's also not expensive if you want to use it in a, uh, in a, in a um, non-GPL project. So it's good to save that. And also uh, classical configuration for the full calendar component. So my day starts at eight, it ends at eight. Um, there's this, I added, it increased the slot, I uh, shrank the slot duration and stuff like that. I added a couple of plugins and the header and I added the resources to show in the, uh, to show the different tracks. And now it gets a little tricky because the events uh, for default talks, um, I could just say um, events equals, I'll just do that quickly, uh, results, bam, does that work? 
what is the comma missing? Ah, God, what did I break? Results, should be results, maybe with a bracket, I can't remember. Probably like that. That would work for a, um, hang on, render that again. Yes, uh, for, it works fine, but uh, the, uh, since the, uh, the field for the track is called room in our schema, uh, the full calendar wouldn't know which room to put what because room is nothing that it knows about. So I'll have to iterate over the results. Um, each event is one event and take uh, path resource ID uh, to um, um, assign the room number, which is in this case track one, two, or three, to resource ID. So full calendar can add that to the right uh, slot. Uh, and we're basically done with the, uh, with, the, with the calendar view. And you see, I still have the other views available. I can add a different, I obviously broke something here. Not sure what, reload, yeah, still works. Uh, I have the different views available. I could add a, uh, a list of talks for only one day. I add a calendar on the, in another folder and stuff like that. It's just all, in this case, it's all on the same uh, in the same uh, folder uh, for brevity's sake. So um, this is my final full calendar view, and that's basically it. I'm going to have a quick summary for you um, of what I want to uh, say. So. Number one is Volto is a excellent excuse to learn React uh, because jumping in is not, uh, you don't have to be super hard uh, to jump in. It's done a lot, it does a lot for you already. Uh, you can use a huge world of React components. Uh, it combines the power of Plone with the speed of React and beware, JavaScript is still a really horrible language, but the JavaScript tool chain is excellent. You might have seen I use VS Code for editing JavaScript. I use Sublime for Python uh, development, but the tool chain for JavaScript is really excellent. You don't have to use it. There's still a classic front end in Plone 6 that is rendered on the server as HTML. And you can use the Mastering Plone training to jump in. It's a preview on training starts of the Mastering Plone. And we're soon going to deploy training clone org slash six with the Mastering Plone training. It has shit on more features. It has content rules, adapters. It has, it has so many things that your head will buzz. It's going to take a full week of an in-place training to get that all in your head. I hope you had fun. Thanks for your time, and I'm very much looking forward to any questions that you may have.